Hi everyone, good morning. Grab your popcorn. We're going to have a great video for you hopefully this morning. It's going to be the final segment of all of our first flight videos that you've been watching here lately. And what we're going to do today is we're actually going to simulate actual flight time in an RV-10, what a first flight might look like for you. Meaning we're going to simulate some uh, failures. We're going to talk through all of those. We're going to tell you the normal things you should be doing. And hopefully that will help those of you who are getting ready to make your first flight. And so before we get started there today, I want to introduce you to somebody that is actually the reason why we have all of these videos and you're all able to watch them. Because if it was left up to me, I just do things and I don't take the time to take the pictures. So behind the camera here, we have my wonderful wife, Carol. Hi, Carol. Good morning. How are you? Good. Great. Going flying this morning, yes? Going flying. All right. And Carol is going to be known by another name that pilots have. For all the nagging warnings that we get in the cockpit, we affectionately refer to them as Bitching Betty. So that's what Carol is going to do for us today. At various points during the flight, Carol is going to create some noise, some warning sounds, etc. She has a list to work from. They'll be randomized. And we'll talk through them and tell you what the appropriate action should be. So grab your popcorn, sit down, and we're going to pre-flight. If you notice here, uh, I've got preheat on the airplane. It's 29 degrees here in Atlanta this morning. Yes, it's a little chilly for us. And when it's going to be below 40 or 50 degrees, I do preheat. And now when I start, uh, we'll have oil temps right around 100 degrees. So it's much, much easier on the engine. All right, let's get the airplanes out and get pre-flighted. And here we go. Okay, so here we are in the cockpit. We've done a very thorough pre-flight. We are full up on fuel, as you can see right here. As I recommended, it's an RV-10, so we've got some weight in the back. The ideal thing for the first flight is to put your CG at the midpoint. And so we do that with some weight in the baggage compartment on the RV-10. One of the things I like about the advanced flight systems is over here we can actually make the screen full size with only displaying the engine gauges. It makes it very easy to just make a quick glance over there at the engine gauges. Even though I do have them set up here in front of me, but I've also got uh, map information as well as attitude information there. But uh, this is going to be there for, you know, if you have an additional pilot like I've mentioned, it's very easy for them to just monitor the engine gauges. So what we're going to do now is work through a before start checklist and get everything started. The preheat I'll show you here. We've already got about 86 degrees on the engine temp. So that's really, really nice with the preheat. So here we go and we'll talk to you in a bit. Okay, we're back live here. We're all started up. You can see we've got really nice temperatures now. So we're going to be taxiing down here to do a run up. And all gauges are green. So parking brake coming off. You can, uh, we're going to taxi out here. We'll go to the end down here and we'll do a run up. Remember I mentioned that you want to have everything set up. So we've got all of our frequencies set up already. If we're going to use the GPS, we've got it set up. We've got our tower ground frequencies, in this case just the Unicom. So oh, here we are, and so we'll run through our checklist now before takeoff, brake set. Okay, seat belts are secure, the doors are latched, we have no warning lights here. Okay, flight controls are all free and correct. Okay, the altimeter right here, we're going to set that. Our barrow here. Set this for 840, that's our field elevation here. Back to our checklist. Mixture is going to be rich here. Elevator trim over here is neutral along with the elevator and aileron. And then we're going to do a run up and we're going to cycle our propeller. So here we go. Okay. The RPMs, we're going to run them up to about 2,000 RPMs. I'm holding the stick back. That pressure off of the nose. So run up to around 2,000 RPMs here. All right, and then I'm going to turn off the electronic ignition. This is where we'll get the larger drop on the magneto. You want no more than 175. That looks good. 
Back to both, and now we'll turn off the magneto, and you'll see we'll get very little drop on the electronic. Give me 20 to 30 RPMs. Back to both. Now we're, now we're going to cycle the propeller. So, cycling the propeller. Now on a new one, you may find yourself having to pull this back and leave it for a bit. Just to get some oil up to that propeller. We're going to do three cycles here. That's an MT governor. It's very, very responsive, even at lower RPM. Okay, we've got that done. Okay, we've gone through all of our checklists here. So now we're going to look at our next portion. We're ready to take off here. So as I mentioned in the RV-10, you can look out there at the aileron camera. We're going to put some flaps down and match that aileron. That's what we do in the RV-10. So we're going to bring the flaps up there, there. So we put the aileron all the way over with a stick and then just match the flaps. That gets them out of reflex there and allows us to get a little shorten the takeoff roll. Okay, so we're going to do our controls are free and correct. Our instruments are all in the green. Okay, our fuel is on the left tank. The fuel pump is coming on. Seat belts are on. And we're going to taxi down the runway. Strobe lights are on, and we'll get the landing lights to the wigwag when we get down there. Mallard's landing. RV-10 is taxiing runway 25, Mallard's. So the runway is clear. We're going to taxi down here to the end. Now, as I mentioned, the idea is to try and get down here and keep those cylinder head temps in 300, mid-300s max. If you start seeing cylinder head temps approaching 400 degrees because of a long taxi, I'd consider shutting down and letting it cool off for a bit. Uh, that first flight, uh, you're going to get some really high cylinder head temps on the first takeoff run. So best to start them in the low 300s if you can. As you can see here, we're all 330 or so. And so, again, what I do when I get down here is we just verify our fuel pump is on all the time. Engine gauges are still green. Our oil temp, Lycoming men, or recommends 80 degrees minimum. We have 108 degrees on this one, so we're uh, lucky recipients of the preheat there. Did a nice job. These are expensive today, so we just want to treat them very, very well. Now we've briefed ourselves a hundred times and understand there's only a few scenarios we're going to do an abort for. But mentally we want to be prepared for that. One of the things we do, always in the RV-10, even though I have door warning lights here, you can see when I bring the throttle up, the door warning lights will come on if the door is in fact open. So these look good here, I check them. But we always call doors closed and locked as we pull onto the runway in the RV-10. Doors closed and locked. Yep, mine's locked. All right, and here we go. Well, the runway's clear. Now, remember I said a nice, gentle, three-second acceleration profile on the throttle. So here we go. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Airspeed is alive. Here. Door open. All right, door open is an abort. Just as we got airborne, the door came open, so you can see a nice, gentle abort. Bring the power back very, very gently. Nothing rapid. it be a nice, gentle touchdown. Okay? With plenty of runway here. And it's a little bumpy there in the middle. All right, so there was an abort scenario. You can see there should be nothing that is exciting about it. Nice, gentle pullback on the power. And uh, we came to a... So what we're going to do now is taxi back for another turnaround. One of the things I'd recommend if you really do have an abort for a first flight is the adrenaline is going to be much higher than normal for the second takeoff. I would encourage you to go back, sit down, take a break. One, you're going to want to let the engine potentially cool off a little bit. And get your act together, perhaps perform another thorough pre-flight, and then go back and do it again. Now, one of the things that I didn't mention in my early comments is Carol's on board today. Carol's not a pilot. 
So if you remember, you got to look at your operating limitations, but most of them today allow you to use an additional pilot. That person has to be exactly that, a pilot, qualified. So you look in the additional pilot program, there's paperwork to be done on both the aircraft and the pilots. Carol, no way would meet those qualifications. That's why today is a simulated first flight for all of you. So she would not be here. No, you can't take somebody who want to film it for you. You could mount your GoPro. We have data recording here in the advanced flight system. So after the flight, we can actually review all of the data and see what the engine parameters were looking like. In this case, since it's simulated abort, and I'm very familiar with the aircraft, we are going to just taxi back and do another one. Okay, so here we are. We're turning back around on runway 25. We're verifying everything is set for takeoff. Okay, and okay, yes, it's a little bit of a soft field takeoff, but not much here. We have the perf mat, so we're going to just try and do a normal rotation to show you what the attitude should look like on climb out. So again, everything's green. Here we go. Nice three seconds to full throttle. Okay. In this case, I bring the stick back just a little to take the weight off of the nose. Okay. And flaps over speed. Oh, we just got a flaps over speed. So that's typical, okay, if you've not got your alarm set properly. At this low airspeed, we're not going to be concerned. We're just accelerating through 82 knots, so we're still in flap range. The runway has disappeared underneath the nose. And this is where I bring the flaps up and I start in an immediate right 45 degree turn. Okay? What I should have mentioned ahead of time is I did set my heading marker at 45 degrees to the runway before I took off. Caution. Okay. RPM high. Okay, we just got a RPM high warning. That is also typical on the first flight. What has happened there is we probably haven't had time yet to set the governor for that, so we're a little bit through it. The actual thing to do here is just grab your, your propeller and pull it back a little. In this case, I'm going to pull it back completely to 2,500 RPMs. That's my normal climb RPMs in the RV-10. I'm now over 1,000 feet above the ground. I'm going to start a left-hand turn back towards the airport, so I remain over top of the airport. An RPM high, which you'll see sometimes, is you'll be up around 2730, 2750 uh, for some aircraft engines, and it's just a little high for takeoff, so don't panic. Just pull your governor back to uh, the 2700 or 2650 or so for takeoff. So here you can look back and you can see we're remaining over top of the runway. Okay, if the engine were to quit right now, we're coming up on 3,000 feet AGL. And I'm simulating something for you. I'm going to try and level off here. I'm, I'm going to reduce the power to 25 squared, as I mentioned. But as we're picking up speed, I'm having to hold forward stick pressure. And no matter what I'm doing with the trim, I've got high, it won't go forward. So what is going to be our quick cure for that? The quick cure is to reduce the power. Yes, I know we're on the first flight and we want to keep the engine power up, but this is a safety issue. So we want to get the pressure off of the stick and figure out what's going on with the trim. In this case, the trim is off. So I'm going to flip it to on. Okay. I'm going to go back up with power. We want to get that engine broken in. And the trim is now working. So don't panic if your trim forces get high, is the lesson there. Just slow down. Okay, we're going to make left-hand turn, so I'm going to make certain I'm on the right-hand tank. I'm going to flip the lever to the right-hand tank. I'm going to verify fuel pressure remains okay, at 29 PSI there. Remember, I said I wanted to make all of my turns with the fuel on the high wing. So now that we're up high enough, we're at top of climb, I'm going to turn off the fuel pump, watching the fuel pressure. It's going to drop maybe 4 PSI, but it should hold. Caution, high fuel flow, high. All right, we just got a caution, high fuel flow. What could cause that? 
So high fuel flow, don't forget, we're running very high power right now, okay? And we probably didn't lean. We don't want to lean on this flight because we're breaking in an engine. We want to run it full rich. So we can try pulling the mixture back and make certain that the fuel flow does come back. If you watch this, we're running pretty high here now, this power setting. I'm going to bring the mixture back and the fuel flow is going to come back. That's good. If it comes back in the normal range, it just means we've probably got any, uh, the fuel uh, warnings aren't calibrated properly. So we're not going to worry about that. Okay. All right, I'm going to come back to normal cruise power here so we can talk because we don't need to break this engine in. So don't pay attention to the power settings anymore. We're just going to talk about potential failures. The idea here is to keep the airport in view talk to the tower if necessary. Most of the time they don't want to be bothered unless you're coming back. Caution, CHT high. All right, we just got a caution, CHT high. So what we want to do is look over here at our CHTs and see what's going on. This is a broken in engine, so we're not going to be able to simulate that quite, but typically what you'll see on a first flight Cylinder head temps of 435 degrees are okay. If you start seeing something above that, then it's time to reduce the power and see if the temperatures come down. Typically, your highest CHTs are reached just at top of climb, so that's typically where you'll get that uh, warning. And typically, the reason why you're getting a high CHT on the first flight is you've set your levels up to give you a warning around 400, which is good once an aircraft is broken in. So again, remember my admonition on an earlier thing, you might consider turning off your warnings if you have an experienced pilot on board, so somebody knows what those things should be. Caution, oil pressure low. Oh boy, Bitch and Betty's getting to me today. Oil pressure low. So we look at oil pressure here quickly. Uh, why would we have an oil pressure low problem? So that could just be a calibration issue with an old sensor. If we've got good, reliable Cablico sensors, that's a pretty serious problem to take a look at. One of the first things I would look at would be oil temp. If the oil temp is staying normal, there's a good chance we only have an indication problem because typically low oil pressure is preceded by the oil temperature climbing. So in this case, we have normal oil temp. I'm going to watch it for a little bit. Uh, if I'm at a controlled field, I might give the tower a heads up and tell them, hey, look, we have an indication here that might might want us to come back sooner, and we'll let you know. Uh, so we'll very carefully watch that one for a bit. Caution, oil temp high. All right, so now we got a caution, oil temp high. Let's assume that did not come with the oil pressure low. We've got an oil temp high. Why might we have that on the first flight, and could it be a normal indication? I will tell you yes, especially for some of the higher powered engines. Those of you who have high horsepower engines that maybe have piston squirters on them, or the IO390, I've noticed on the RV14s on the first flight. So we'll see temperatures sometimes around the 200, 225 degrees. Watch it, see if it's stabilized. I've all of them stabilize right around 225, so they're not really a problem. And afterwards, they tend to break in at, and run around uh, 190, 195 degrees. And those are summertime temps. In the wintertime, they may not get that hot. As I mentioned in one of the earlier videos, early morning flights like today where the temperature are cool are best. We're running high air speeds. The air is nice and smooth, and it also helps with proper cooling. Caution. Amps low. So here we are, we actually have amps low, so most likely we've got a alternator failure. So in this case, we can cycle the alternator. Let's assume we cycle the alternator and we have nothing. Now in this one, we're going to try our standby alternator. So we have two alternators. So I've turned on the standby, and the amps came right back up. So we'll check that alternator when we get on the ground. For now, no problem. Let's say we don't have a standby alternator, and we turn on the main alternator, we recycle it, and we still get zero amps. I would tell you it's not anything to panic about, but it is time to start thinking about getting on the ground. If you have a good charged battery, and you've been paying attention, and your volts are above 12 and a half, in this case 12.8, there's no reason to panic. 
Take your time, make a normal landing, especially for those of you who have retracts and might have an electric-driven hydraulic pump. It is time to think about getting on the ground. So we're going to put our alternator back on here. And in this case, it's just going to charge a little high. We're going to get an alarm for amps high because we're over 60 amps now. So anyway, as that goes back down, we'll be all set here. We'll continue our circle. Now what I'm going to do, we've been running on the right tank for a while. What I'll do is cut halfway across the airport here, just so I stay over top of the airport. And then we're going to start doing right-hand turns. We want to make certain on this flight that the aircraft actually feeds properly from both fuel tanks. Because this is the flight that we're mentally prepared to get back to the airport, and we're in a position to do so. So here we are coming back to level. I'm going to put the fuel pump on when I change tanks. And we're going to go back to the left tank. Caution, fuel pressure low. Oh, we swapped fuel tanks and our fuel pressure went low. So in this case, since it was a working airplane, uh, fuel pressure did not go low, but let's assume it did. Immediately what we want to do is, one, verify the fuel pumps on, and how can we verify it actually went on? So you can check your amps when you turn on a fuel pump. If we watch our amps right there, I'm going to turn it back off and you'll see the amps drop off. So when we turn the pump on, that pump draws about 3 to 4 amps. Uh, you should see the amps go. So we know the pump is working. Immediately, though, I would go back to the other tank because we know it was feeding properly from that tank. So is that an abort scenario? Not if you got your fuel pressure back to where it needs to be when you went back to that other tank. Just don't use the right tank again anymore on the flight. So now you can see we're doing right-hand circuits. We're keeping the airport in view. And also, we stay in a position from which we could make a landing if we had to. From this altitude in most of the RVs, a simple 180 uh, would put you in a really nice position to, to you know, safely make that approach. Well, I think we've covered everything that's possible scenarios on the first flight. So it's kind of time, you know, uh, usually we're about, maybe by this time we're looking like we're about 11 minutes into a first flight. Things have usually settled out by this time. And if everything's working well, what I'll do as the additional pilot is I'll go through some other scenarios for the owner just to verify some things are set up properly, such as the autopilot. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to put everything back here so you can see what's going on. I'm going to center the heading bug right there, the yellow bug, and I'm going to put the autopilot in heading mode and engage the autopilot. Autopilot okay. And it should go right back to that heading. Okay. Rim down. There we go. It went right back to that heading. Rim up. And then what we can do is just by using the heading bug is... Oh, now don't get caught up in doing this stuff without staying over top of the airport. Rim down. So we can see it does in fact turn right and left like it should. And the other thing we'll verify is that it's holding the altitude. Autopilot off. Autopilot we want to make sure we get the proper enunciations. Disconnect the autopilot. In this case, it said autopilot off, so we're good. And we're going to continue back towards the airport. I think that just about concludes everything I can think about on the first flight. We could talk about some other scenarios that might be a little more serious. Let's say we start having a rough running engine. First off, make certain you get pointed back towards the airport. Two, let's check the ignition system. So we would look over here. The first thing I would do with a rough running engine is, is actually turn off one or the other ignition systems and see if it happens to be just one of them. Typically, that's what happens. Sometimes you'll get a fouled plug on one of the ignition systems can cause issues. If that's the case, no harm. Leave that ignition system off and then consider going back and landing. Sometimes maybe you've, uh, hopefully you've left the mixer full rich for this first flight, but if you have pulled it back, just force a habit. Sometimes you have it too lean for these high power settings and the engine will begin to miss. So check the mixture control. I don't know if there's too many other scenarios if we got this far into the first flight that should be a problem. Let's say the screens 
happen to go all dark. I mean, that's something we could simulate here. We're going to turn these off. How do we do? Okay. <laughs> oh, the passengers start screaming. Okay. The reality is there's no problem here. Okay. We've got a backup attitude indicator here. That gives us airspeed. We also have a GPS here that can give us ground speed. Okay. We could pull up the data side. All right. And it would give us ground speed. So if we didn't have any of that stuff, there's no need to panic. We could look out this window and make a normal approach and landing without any of this equipment. So don't panic just because everything goes dark. The engine's still running. Remember, this stuff is all electrical. So it may go dark, but the engine doesn't care. So we'll give ourselves everything back and... Right, so one of the scenarios that we talked about during all of our earlier videos is how to determine our approach speed and to make certain that our airspeed is somewhat accurate. So we've been flying around here at pretty much a high power setting now for 35, 40 minutes. Could have seen a drop in the cylinder head temps, and so I usually let it go for about 10 minutes past that. Then what we're going to do is pull the power back and we're going to slow down the flap range speed. And if you watch, we're doing very small reductions in power here. We're going to keep it, try and keep it warm, maybe a little bit above 10 inches of manifold pressure. And you can see the airspeed is decreasing. If we look outside, we're holding our altitude. So it looks like we're started at 2,900 here. And I would recommend you do this at an altitude you're comfortable with, at least 2,000 feet over the ground. So here we are now coming down into flap speed, 86. So I'm going to lower some flaps. I'm going to come back to the first notch of flaps. And we're going to continue to slow down. And since we're experienced here, we're going to go ahead and do a full flap thing. Our holding our altitude, you can see our pitch is increasing there. So now we're going to get full flaps down. And we're just going to leave the power set about 10 inches was what we use on final. Without allowing for any descent here, you can see our altitude, very little descent. We're just going to watch and feel for a little bit of a burble. And look at what that airspeed is. Typically it's around 47 on the RV-10. Here we are, 46, 45. We can feel a little bit of shudder. Carol, you feel that shudder? Yes. All right, so now we're just going to gently go back up in the power and reduce the f and get the flaps up. And then we're going to come back up to power and let the engine rewarm back up. Remember, we got that new engine here we want to take care of. By the way, one of the things I like to do on that approach to a stall scenario is make sure you're over the airport. That's the first time in flight we're going to have a reduced power setting. So we want to make certain you know where you are just in case you have to make a turn back to the airport. Now, I had the prop set at the 2500 that we were normally using to doing high speed turns here. You can just leave it set at 2500. We're going to go make a normal traffic pattern here in land. We're going to check for traffic. There's nobody around here now and we've slowly started our descent. Remember one of the things I talked about was make a nice gradual reduction in power here on your descent so we keep this engine nice and warm. The last thing we want to do is rapidly cool a brand new engine. Actually, any time for that matter, but especially on this first one. And then as we're approaching the traffic pattern here, we're going to do our landing checklist. So that's our typical uh, dump check, right? So fuel, okay, we're on the left tank. I'm making right-hand turns, so we're going to stay on the left-hand tank. Okay, fuel is good. We've got the fuel pump on for landing. Undercarriage, in this case, we do not have a... Uh, retractable gear airplane, but if you remember I mentioned, do check your brakes. You reach up there and pump the pedals and make certain you do have brakes. And then the mixture, you can go full, you're going to be at full rich, I would leave it there. Uh, once you start flying this airplane broken in, I do put the mixture just about halfway. Or so. And then the propeller, once the power comes back, then I will run the prop forward. <coughs> Mallards traffic, RV-10 is a right downwind runway 25 Mallards. Okay, we verify everybody still has a seatbelt on. Yep. And at this time, we'll discontinue all cabin service.
On the RV-10 here, right below 100 or so, I'll bring the flaps out of reflex. So that's that first notch. You can see they came down just a hair. And then the flap range is right at 89. That's when we're going to, or 87, we're going to bring in the first notch of flaps. So there we are at 85. First notch of flaps is, are coming in. And I'm going to start a turn to base here. We want to keep our uh, traffic pattern here high so that if we were to lose the engine here, we can make that runway. But we're not going to put in the last notch of flaps till we know we have the runway made. The idea is to land in the first third of the runway. For those of you with carburetor heat, I would put it on. Most of the time you don't need it in the RVs because of the uh, carburetors attached to the oil sump, but better safe than sorry. Mallard's RV-10 is turning final, runway 25, 400. Mallard. Okay, we last 100. bit of flaps. And remember I mentioned, use your normal approach speed. So here we are, right? We're right around 80, which typically can be a little fast in the 10. Okay, but this is a first flight. But you'll see we're, we're slowly decelerating, and we're going to land in the first third of the runway. We're coming up on our 1,000-foot markers. We have a 4,500-foot runway. There we are. Oop. That was a little harder than I wanted, but that worked out all right. There you have it, a simulated first flight scenario for an RV-10. Hopefully that's of some value to many of you out there. One of the things I would uh, ask that you do is for those of you who might have a friend or know somebody who's making a first flight, please share this stuff with them. Well, this flight brings to a close our series on first flights. I hope it's been a lot of help to those of you who are maybe thinking about making your first flight. You're getting close. And maybe for those of you who are building, it's going to be inspirational. For those of you who may just know somebody who's building or getting ready to make a first flight, we sincerely hope you'll share it or point it to them. You know, we don't monetize our YouTube channel. We're here to promote safety in aviation. It's really, really important to us. And it's whether it's uh, the maintenance side or the flying side. And uh, we have a lot of fun doing it and sharing. So thanks for watching and enjoy.